Good evening, everybody. It's a new human experience podcast. Today is October the 3rd, and the topic tonight is the illusion of reality. I know we are going through some interesting um, times as, uh, as far as energetically speaking, that is. We, had, we went through a split, the, the split between three dimen third dimension and fifth dimension. And uh, there's a lot of energies that's coming in. And at times it, it seems like um, we're feeling some intensity, whether physically or emotionally. Um, it, and it's like, come, it's, it's like one wave after another and after another. And sometimes we, we just, okay, so now that we uh, have so much energetic support and the, the split has already happened, so how come things just don't seem to, or, or maybe things have changed a lot for you. However, um, if you just look outside, in, as in checking the, um, the world at large, and just looking out the window, um, if there's still daylight out there is, that doesn't seem to be as much change as we, or as I would hope to, to see. And so there is a, um, how should I put it? It's like, okay, so now that we've waited so long for the other shoe to drop and the other shoe finally dropped, and then what's going on? How come things are not happening yet or not happening as fast as we want it to be yet? So I would like to talk a little bit about the, the reality that we are seeing and um, how reality is as, um, from my point of view anyway, so the, the way I see it. So I want to share with you a, a recent event. It's it just, I think it's Monday, or maybe Monday or, or Tuesday, I forgot which day it was. And uh, right now my son is traveling uh, to Japan and just having, seems like having a very good time. And then I think it was maybe Monday or Tuesday, I got a, a WhatsApp message from him is he asking me to send him some money because somehow he, um, because he, he didn't know that he couldn't, he couldn't, um, uh, his, whatever it is that his phone, that, that he has access to on his phone, he cannot transfer money from savings into his checking account. So he seemed to have trouble, um, getting money out from his checking account. So of course I went into fear mode. Um, it's like, my baby in Japan needs me. So I was like, okay, how can I just um, send him some money? And, and I explored different alternatives with him. Can I e-transfer money so that he can just get it? And, and that's out of the way. So the only way it seems like that's available at um, at, during that time, it was using PayPal. So I started to, to go into my PayPal and send him the money. Um, however, for whatever reasons, I just couldn't seem to send him the, the $3,000 that he asked for. And I was like, like getting uh, um, frustrated. And it was like all these fear scenarios playing out in my mind. And, and that went on for about the frustration and the fear mode went on for maybe about an hour or so. And then all of a sudden, I just, I just clicked in and said, oh, I'm in fear mode and it's not helping at all. So I need to, I need to clear, I need to clear myself. I need to let go. And because it's, yes, it's, it's my son. However, he's a powerful person. So he um, was through guidance. He, he, it's his own guidance that guided him to go to Japan. At this time, he actually picked the 17th of September, which is, you know, right the day after the split. Not, not before, mm, no, not, not even one day before. It was right at that. So it's obviously something that has so guided him to do for whatever reason. It so needed him to be in Japan to get whatever it is that he uh, is supposed to get there. And I just um, have to process my own insecurity about not having my son because yeah, he's always been 
if not living with me in the same house, at least close by that I can I can reach out to him very easily. And this is really the first time, well, not the first time, but well, he's been in Japan for a couple of times previously, but this is one of the first times that I really feel this vulnerability. And so I was completely susceptible to creating this perfect storm in a teacup for myself. And once I started to let go and really acknowledge that he is the powerful person that he is and he can, um, whatever it is that he needed to experience and whatever it is that he needed to get, he will, he will manifest. And I need to manage myself so that I don't add to the chaos. So once I started clearing myself and really calm down, taking a deep breath and just switch my thinking around and and think of, okay, how can I contribute to resolving this rather than um, being caught up in this in this um, kind of altered reality? And it was like almost instantaneously when I start to calm down and do the clearing on myself and really get centered, then I actually got a text from him and said, oh, don't worry, mom. I've actually called the bank in, uh, in, in Canada and resolved it and I got the, the money transferred. Uh, so don't worry about it. Sorry, I, I am sorry for the, the trouble. Sorry for um, you know, uh, putting you through this. And it was like, it's just like when, I, when that happened, it was like, wow. All of a sudden, when I get clear myself, the storm just um, dissipated as quickly as it started to happen. Because, you know, before, before that, everything was fine. My morning was fine. And all of a sudden, I got a text from my son and it just threw me in a loop. And then just as easily when I start to get centered on myself and let go of any expectation, then everything just resolved without me having to do too much. So that really um, spoke volumes to me about the, the kind of energy and the times that we have right now is, is that the energy is actually very supportive. It, because this insecurity about um, the, the, the story I have is I have a son and I'm responsible for him. This actually diminishes him as a person to create for himself and of course it it also diminishes myself as that I needed him to be something to be saved or I needed something outside of myself in order for to complete me otherwise I am like in, in shambles so it actually showed me a program that I know kind of it's there, but I just haven't acknowledged it fully. And so this little instant, just the, the universe just co-created co this um, with my son and all this banking stuff just um, brought it up in my face so that I have to face my own insecurity and just start to handle it so that I know that, you know, this is in my in my energy field, in my body. And so I've been really get digging deeper into how to let go of um, not just insecurities about my, my son, it's really insecurity as a vibration. Because as source, we really don't need anything outside of us. And if we think we need something outside of us in order for us to feel secure, in order for us to feel loved, in order for us to feel um, like we have everything, like the, the world is, is what we want it to be, expectations, and all of that, that actually takes away our power. When I get present to, and the energy support me to, to reveal all these, I would say, um, programs that I haven't quite dealt with yet, and it's all coming up and it, to 
for me to, to look at and also to support me to remember to choose what it is that I want to be in my reality, to, to choose joy, light, love, rather than to choose to be um, just insecure and needing something outside of me. So it actually got me thinking about what reality really is. So, so how, how real is real? Because this, um, this thing all just happened within a within matter of minutes and it just dissipated as fast as it came. So this is what reality is. It's, it's actually not very solid anymore. Reality is not solid anymore. It's very pliable. And once you, once the, whatever it is that you need to get out of the scenario, whatever the scenario is, then you have the choice, or I should say, I have the choice to let it go or let it continue to consume me if I want to play with this drama more. I could have dragged it on for, for longer. And, um, and I've seen actually um, people around me that have actually dragged it on for days until, uh, until they really got um, tired of this kind of drama and then they just um, decided to let it go. So that is the, the kind of energy and times we have now. So um, when I think of reality, I think of that they're actually reality bubbles. So I have a reality bubble. And when I'm just by myself and in my own world, in my own, own, own um, I would say in my own fantasy, then I can have almost 100% control over what it is that I, I choose to see and I can be the most zen-like monk in the world. And that's, that's when I'm in my own reality bubble. And then once we step out of my own personal reality bubble and, and step into the next bubble, which is the bubble of friends and family, like on my community, then because there are more people involved, so and we get to co-create with each other and how do we how do we um, relate with each other we actually would a, be able to find out what are the undercurrents so this actually it's another level of reality and at first it seems like when we're in the community bubble we don't have as much we don't have as much um, i would say control over what it is that we can can or cannot create however that's just an illusion because there really is no one outside of ourselves all the other you can actually think of all the other people that's outside of you whether it's friends families or maybe it's just a random stranger that seems that that really uh, has some interaction with you maybe just for a moment. So all of that actually is, you can actually take a look at that as a, um, whatever it is that's within yourself being projected out. So if I have a friend who is, for example, who is, who is very sickly and always use um, the, the, the state of her, health to as an excuse to not progress then that really is so what i can actually gain out of this the insight i can gain of it of it is how am i doing that in my own life how am i you know sometimes when i feel particularly sluggish or when i have a little bit of um, um, pain in my shoulders and so how it is that I use my body as an excuse to get out of doing things that I had promised myself I would do that day. So that actually is, even though it's happening to a friend of mine, however, if I'm seeing something in my bubble, then it is actually within me, within myself. 
So that is really how I look at it, is that everything around me, every body around me, and every, not just the human beings, but the environment, the animals, how they react to me, how like even the, the scenery around me, the, the weather, for example, it's all just a reflection of what's going on inside um, of myself. And if I take this point of view, then it's actually very easy for me to start to look at the, the parts about myself that I'm not too conscious of. And when I have a friend of mine that is, um, I would say, always in my face, doing things that I don't quite approve of or somehow I have a judgment against, then it's not really about her or him or them. It's really about what's within myself that has that is sticking to this judgment. And because I'm sticking to this judgment, it actually prevents me from actualizing the the being the love light that I truly am. So that's really how I use other people. And I find that when I start to look at it that way and start to clear the 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 obstacles that's within myself, the the, the programs that's with, within myself, and once I let go of that, then my outside, the people around me, they seem to change. They seem to start to reflect what it is that I have already um, because because I don't need anything from them, I don't judge anymore. So they, on a very unconscious level, maybe not so unconscious level, they would take that cue and they don't need to play the role that they have played. And that frees them up to be who they truly are rather than to just play the role that I have projected on them. And then I actually recently um, read a book called um, The Illusion of Money. And Carl Cease is, the, is the, the writer of this book. And I really love how he puts it. And he says, he said that, you know, um, we all think we need things. I'm, of course, paraphrasing very liberally. But the gist of it, it, from what I got so far, is that we seem to need things. We seem to need money in order to feel secure. We need to, um, to have a certain amount of money in order to feel secure. We believe that we need people to love us so that we feel worthy of love. And we believe we need to have control over our environment whether it is our government to behave a certain way or don't behave a certain way, or, our, or we need to have our jobs or people that we work with and family members and all that. We, we seem to need other people to be a certain way in order for us to feel like um, everything is still okay in our world. And this, um, and this is actually a is actually an illusion because the insecurity the the feeling of unworthiness is actually already there within our own being and and because it's already there i'm not saying in our highest self being i'm just saying that as a in the human level when because when we are growing up these we picked up these, um, I would say, thought forms to play with. And when we have picked up a thought form that says, I'm not good enough, then we would very creatively, within our environment, find ways to um, reflect back to us that program that like someone would tell us, oh, Yes, I yeah, I think you're doing good work, but I like to work with someone else. So this they would reflect back to us this 
program that we have adopted that we are not good enough. And if we feel that we need someone to tell us that they love us in order for us to feel worthy of love, then that is also a programming that we have picked up. And a lot of times we, we feel we need to be all these things in order for us to feel secure, feel good, feel like we are having a great life. And the reality, the true truth is that no, it's because these programs, these thought forms already exist in our, in our mind. That's why we, in order to, um, I would say, for the time being, to forget about um, dealing with these programs. Instead of getting rid of the programs, we have to go and find and make someone to love us and to please other people in order to not feel that rejection, in order to feel that we are worthy, in order to, to and we amass great wealth or whatever it is that we need to amass in order to feel secure. It's not because um, getting any of these material things will give us anything. It is just that we have these thought forms within our mind. And instead of dealing with it, we have conned ourselves. We have taken the, the, the blue pill, the blue pill that makes us forget and makes us not deal with the reality for the time being until the next crisis comes up, until the next person um, that we love and we think we need to have love from in order for us to feel like we're worthy, is that that is really what's underneath it, is that we need to actually not go for the fix, not go for the quick fix, and actually start to look at the thought form that is giving us that insecurity, that is giving us that feeling of unworthiness. And when we finally get to the, the I would say, the root of our insecurity, the root of our unworthiness, and really be with that and be okay with it, and finally find beneath all that, that insecurity that is just something that we adopted. And when we, are, when we know that we're done, then we can start to let it go. And when we do that kind of work, then we don't need anything outside of us. And that's when we can actually take back our power. And even when we are in the community bubble, we can actually start to emulate that, that level of self-love, that level of worthiness, that level of integrity that would just attract those things that really wants to love you because you are love and would honor your worthiness because you are worthy. You don't have to do anything and you are still worthy. It is just that we have adopted a, a thought form, a pattern of thought that convinced us that we are not worthy. And that's, that's simply an illusion. So when it, it is when we start to do that level of work on ourselves, that's when we can recover our true power, recover our true self. So that is really, I would say, the, um, the main points I want to, to touch on.